Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're out the range just to do an informal video. Right now I'm a bit conflicted. I um, am holding in my right hand my Jeep gun. This is a gun I've kept with me since they came out. I tested them, fell in love with it, and I completely trust this Bryn too. It's made by CZ in the Czech Republic and imported by CZ USA. And we did a video on these. Jason has one in 7.62x39 as well. This one's in 5.56, has an eight inch barrel. And on top of it, I have a kinetic mount, quick detach mount and a comp M5 aim point. And the other gun I've been a long time fan of. And at one time it's uh, older sibling was my go-to gun, if you will. And that was the Tavor. But I recently picked up an SBR X95, and uh, this is vying for the space in my Jeep as my uh, quote-unquote truck gun. Now the Bren is technically a pistol and it has a brace on it. It's an SB tactical brace, and I can travel freely uh, throughout the United States for the most part with this, barring a couple of states. And if you take a look at them side by side with the brace collapsed, the Bren's only a couple of inches longer. But again, the Bren has an eight inch barrel and the Tavor SBR just above it has a 13 inch barrel length. And when you're talking about a 5.56, that's not insignificant, especially when you start, start shooting past 100 yards or 200 yards or even past 200 yards. So that's what I'm conflicted about. The X95 SBR is smaller. It is an uh, NFA item. It's in my store's name, and I'm an FFLSOT, so I can travel throughout the states with it as well. But, I mean, traveling with an NFA item opens up a whole bunch of doors to different types of harassment, potentially. Uh, if you get involved with a law enforcement officer that doesn't know the laws or doesn't understand what a FFLSOT is or whatever. Uh, but the same could be said with braces. I mean, that's how we got the original brace ruling was a Colorado police officer arrested a guy out shooting his braced pistol from the shoulder, and that kicked off the whole uh, brace discussion, whether or not it was a stock. And the ATF has since determined it's not a stock. It doesn't change the classification of the handgun. So today what we're doing is you're, I'm just bringing you guys along as I evaluate the two guns side by side and try to make up my mind which one I want to keep with me at all times, or pretty much all times. Definitely when I travel and things like that. I always have a handgun, I always have a rifle nearby if it's legal and I can get away with it. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. We're gonna shoot these two side by side. We're limited in range here because we're not shooting in our long ranges yet this year. Uh, it's an unseasonably warm day. And uh, so we're gonna shoot them side by side, see what the accuracy is like, kind of compare the ergonomics and just get a feel for both of them and see if I can't make up my mind here soon if I wanna transition from the Bren 2 to the X95 SBR. So sit back, grab a cup of coffee or soda or whatever it is you drink, uh, beer <laughs> and uh, enjoy the video. We'll just kick this party off with some mag dumps and see where it goes from there. The Magpul D60 is about the only drum that fits in a bullpup and is somewhat shootable, but in all actuality, it's quite awkward because it breaks my grip. I can't get my hand all the way onto the pistol grip of the gun. But when you're bump firing, that's not really the concern at all, is it? <laughs> Woo! Well, that's the hottest I've gotten, the old girl, new girl, whatever she is. That's pretty funny. So, it does 80s hip fire and bump fire quite well. You just got to get a little bit of practice time in. We are 100% viewers supported through Patreon, and there is a link down below if you'd like to support us in our efforts to bring you the best, most unbiased information that we possibly can. Another great way to support us is to swing by our Forge from Freedom t-shirt store and pick up one of our new t-shirts, like this new CNN shirt. And again, there's a link down below, and that directly supports us here at the Military Arms Channel. All right, she locked open. Now the X95, one of the things I found weird about it is see how long my index finger is, and this is the mag release. I don't have the trigger, which I prefer on the Tavor back here on the magwell. I have to curl my finger back 
and hit that mag release, which is present on both sides of the gun. This is one of the few guns on the market that's truly ambidextrous, meaning you can move all the controls to either side of the gun. Safety selector, uh, the charging handle, the ejection of the gun uh, does require a different bolt if you're a left-handed shooter, but it's readily done. We do the conversions at Copper Custom. And yeah, so that's the only thing that really turned me off about the original X95 was the mag release. I prefer the Tavor. Uh, this one does not have the full size hand guard. It has the pistol grip, which I prefer as well with the traditional trigger guard. And it's very short. I mean, really, you don't have much to hold on to, but it's enough. And it has a hand stop there, so you'll know when you're getting your hand out past the muzzle. Yeah, one thing I'd probably change ultimately if I used it as my truck gun would be the red dot sight. I'd probably take the aim point off the Bren if I make that decision. The Bren is nothing short of amazing. I fell in love with this gun as, as the 805, but there were certain things that I wanted to see changed, which were changed in the Bren 2, which this is. Now, this gun is on the US market now. The, the Bren 2 has a, a different handguard that's commercially available. This is one of the first uh, several hundred guns that came in that were in the true military con configuration. Now they have a modular handguard, which has been basically updated for the US market. And I prefer to have the actual military firearm. Now, the one thing I can't do with the mounting bracket that I have in my Jeep that holds my rifle is run a light. I can run a light on an AR-15, but when you start talking about pistols and SBRs, it's so short that light comes in contact with the bracket arms and I can't run a light on it. That kind of drives me nuts. When I had my BCM in there, yes, it was bigger and harder to get out because of its size. This is definitely easier to get out of the bracket, but it had a light on it. And I really like having a light on my rifle, my defensive rifle. But no matter what, I always have a flashlight on me. All right, so let's do a mag dump here out of the Bren 2. I always leave the, the Comp M5 on too. That's one of the reasons I love Aimpoint. They have, they measure their battery life in years, not hours. And just every couple of years, I just remember to throw another battery in there and I don't ever have to worry about turning my, my optic on. So the Bryn definitely has a better trigger than the X95. It's, infinitely better, uh, but I can fire both guns pretty much equally as well or as fast. It's a tough decision, guys. If this barrel, if this gun was this size and the barrel was a few inches longer, there, there wouldn't be anything to discuss. But an eight inch barrel versus a 13 inch barrel, that's a tough one. One of the really cool things about Aimpoint, especially with Comp M5, it comes with a non-see-through front cap and a see-through back cap. And what that allows you to do is I leave my sight on at all times. And even though I can't see through the sight, I still see the red dot sight with both eyes open. So I can still aim the pistol and still see a, a dot superimposed on my target. It's called an occluded eye optic at that point. And Armisen made the OEG, which was the occluded eye gun sight back in the 80s. It's the same principle. And a lot of people think you have to flip this open for the sight to work, and that's simply not true. So the aim point can leave its lenses protected, and you can leave the sight on and can immediately start shooting it if you want to. All right, I'm gonna open it up. I'm actually gonna take my eyes off because the bridge gets in the way of me seeing. And I have five rounds of some Federal M193 ball. And we're gonna shoot five rounds out of this, then we'll shoot five rounds out of the X95. A lot of people ask me, what bag do I use? This is a Coltec bag. Very strong Second Amendment supporters, and I highly recommend checking them out. All right, let's just rest it on the magazine here, and I'll shoot at the bottom one with the Bryn 2. Five rounds. I think I loaded it. We'll find out here in a second. There's five rounds out of the Bryn 2. And I'll load up five rounds into the X95. 
The Brins trigger is almost too light. It has a lot of take up, but man, that release is super, super light. Complete opposite of the X95, which has just a heavy trigger in general. I like the balance of the X95 much better. Turn the brightness of the dot down a little bit so it doesn't bloom. I don't know. I say that the trigger's heavy, but it's definitely better than the Tavor. But it has take up. It's a little heavier take up, but the brake is surprisingly light on this thing. It's uh, heavier than the, the Bren, but it's not a bad trigger. It's definitely improved. It's not a Geisley, which I'm used to. All my other guns have Geisley triggers in them. But uh, yeah, I think it's more than usable. Let's run down range and see what the two guns did. Pistol versus rifle. Let's take a look at our two group sizes from the two different firearms. So the first one I shot was with the Bren 2. And the Bren 2 shot a group at 50 yards that measured 2.2 MOA using M193 ball. It's not the most accurate ammunition in the world, but that's pretty respectable for that ammo. 2.2 MOA is very good. So you can see what that looks like with the ballistics calculations. The next group I fired was with the X95 from the same distance of 50 yards. And that group measured 3.06, let's just call it three, MOA at 50 yards with the same M193 ball. So the X95 using a red dot sight is producing three MOA groups, which is about right for an X95. Now, if you use different types of ammunition, uh, theoretically, if you find match ammunition it likes, you may get it into the two MOA category, but I like M193 ball because it's a standard military load that's nice and warm, and it's just what I use. So other people will use different types of ammo. I use ball ammo in my 5.56 rifles for self-defense. So the only thing I really, and 3 MOA is more than enough for me. I've demonstrated with my last X95, which shot about the same with M193 ball, that, uh, that I could hit an IPSC kill zone target at 200 yards with a red dot sight sitting cross-legged out at our long range fired 30 rounds, hit 30 times. And that's pretty much all I need out of a fighting rifle. And uh, yeah, so the controls are a little bit different. I have to get back into being used to changing magazines back here, but I've done it so much in the past that it's really not that big of an issue for me, I don't think, but only time will tell there. With the old Bren pistol, the only thing I don't like about it is the fact that it has an eight inch barrel. So what does that mean for velocity? Good question. Let's find out. We have a lab radar here and uh, let's get some velocity data between the two guns and see what that extra barrel length is actually giving me. We have our lab radar all set up. It's a Doppler radar system that tracks the bullets. Very accurate. And we're going to go ahead and hit the record. So it's now looking for a bullet and let's give it one. We have 2,026 feet, per, I'm sorry, 2,926 feet per second, almost 3,000 feet per second out of a 13 inch barrel. All right, let's fire another one. Two thousand nine hundred and seventy seven. And that's at the muzzle. And then we have out at 25 yards, it's still doing 2,875 at 35. It's 2,835. All right. Give it one more. All right, 2,901. That's quite the spread. 2,961. And 3,004. So we got over 3,000 feet per second. Before we fire the Bren 2, let's take a look at what the X95 gave us in terms of an average velocity. So we fired five shots. We had an extreme spread of 103 feet per second. The highest was 3,004 feet per second. The lowest was 2,901. And we had an average of the five shots of 2,954 feet per second. All right, we've created a new series, which is series two. And let's go ahead and get it running here. And let's fire five shots again with the M193 ball. So 
So we have 2,487 feet per second on the first shot. That's a significant drop, guys. Try it again. 2,568. Two thousand five hundred and sixty seven. Two thousand four hundred and thirty nine. Last round. Uh, could not pick up the round. All right, so we got a four shot average. That kind of blows, but we got a pretty good idea what it's going to do. So let's head back out. Head back out to the main screen. So on series two, we only got four shots that actually registered. We had the lowest of 2,439. The fastest was 2,568. We have an average of 2,518 with an extreme spread of 129 feet per second. I don't know if today I can give you guys a definitive answer whether or not I'm going to wind up going to the X95 or wind up keeping the Bren 2 as my truck gun. Uh, there's good cases to be made on both sides. Uh, there are certain legalities that we have to take into consideration. Braced pistols in some jurisdictions are frowned upon or some police officers may not even know. So as an individual traveling between states with a brace, uh, could get you in some trouble. In, in Colorado, it got somebody in trouble. And again, as we mentioned, that's what kicked off the whole brace debate to begin with. So who knows if that's a better option than being a licensed federal firearms dealer. We do weapons demos for other police departments and things like that. I'll use this uh, on those demos. And so for that reason, I'll keep it on the books, which means as a federal license holder, when they say, show me your papers, at least I can show something if I have an SBR. The other concern is vehicle theft. If I leave the gun in the Jeep overnight somewhere, which I don't do, but if I did, I mean, it's a concern if an SBR gets stolen out of a hotel room or something like that. But really, the government just views it as a firearm. You report it stolen. You're not like in trouble any, or anything because somebody stole an NFA item. So I go back and forth. And me, I'm kind of leaning towards the bullpup simply because I am a fan of how small these things are. And we absolutely do see a difference in velocity, which is one of those measurable attributes that favors the bullpup. 13 inch barrel gave us considerably more velocity than the eight inch barrel of the Bryn 2. So yeah, I'll keep you guys posted. If you guys would like to support us another way, a great way to do that is to go to coppercustom.com and there you'll find firearms like this for sale. Also, when you check out, if you select to become a free GOA member, you'll get a one-year membership for free if you purchase anything through the Copper Custom Store. And if you like Twitch gaming, we are Twitch gamers. We do have a link down below to Twitch, our channel there. Give us a follow. And if you're a Patreon supporter, feel free to send me a note. I'll add you as a friend. You can join us in a live stream on Twitch. Guys, thanks for 11 years of support, and we'll talk to you soon. Yeah, I love it. What a awesome little rifle. See you guys later.